Hi, I'm David Hong. I'm the Deputy Director of the Department of Investigational Cancer Therapeutics and also the Clinical Medical Director of the CTRC here at MD Anderson in Houston, Texas. I have the pleasure today of sharing with you uh, some slides of some new precision uh, targets and therapies and expansion of those indications in old targets. My first uh, of the uh, new targets is RAS. Many of you have heard that uh, there is a revolution going on in the development of RAS inhibitors. Most recently, CARE-SG12C in non-small lung have now indications with sotorasib and adagrasib, and also uh, adagrasib in combination with cetuximab is also approved in patients with colorectal with CARES-G12C. But beyond G12C inhibitors, there are many new RAS therapies that are emerging, particularly from a company called Revolution Medicine, a drug called RMC6236, which is a pan-RAS inhibitor showing high, high efficacy in patients with pancreatic cancer and also in non-small cell lung cancer. Other drugs that are specifically targeting CARES-G12D, the most common mutant allele, of KRAS has also uh, been presented here in the slide set, which I recently presented at the triple meeting. All this is promising in the sense that KRAS mutations uh, confer close to 35 to 40 percent of all metastatic cancers and may be one of the first target therapies that could truly transform patients, uh, particularly with pancreatic cancer. The new other new target is, uh, is pre-MT5 inhibitors in what are called MTAP loss patients. This is a new epigenetic drug class. And uh, my colleague, Dr. Jordi Rodon, was also able to present some of this data at the triple meeting in Barcelona this uh, past uh, November, showing, again, uh, efficacy in patients with chemorefractory pancreatic and non-small cell lung cancer patients, close to over 20% response rates in these patients, suggesting that this may also be of benefit both in pancreatic and non-small cell lung cancer patients. The second uh, series of slides are based upon some old targets, particularly HER2 and also NTREF. As many of you know, there are now multiple tumor agnostic indications. And recently we have another tumor agnostic indication within HER2 uh, in HER2 positive patients. The, that data was uh, recently uh, published by my uh, colleague and chair, Dr. Fundamaric Bernstein, showing, again, high response rates and clinical benefit across different patient types and tumor types with HER2 amplification. Lastly, close to my heart is NTREC, and uh, I was able to present that data at ESMO this past uh, year in 2023, showing in first-line patients who have not received any chemotherapy that NTREC fusion patients had a significant clinical benefit and close to greater than 40% of patients had almost complete responses in uh, their uh, resist measurements, suggesting that these patients will, uh, even before chemotherapy, may benefit uh, if uh, identified with NTREC fusions. Again, this all plays out and suggests that one of the most important things that we can do for our patients is to uh, really uh, uh, find these patients through a next-gen sequencing, whether it's through RAS, whether it's through uh, MTAP loss, deletions, whether it's through HER2 amplifications and NTREC fusions. And uh, these emerging uh, new therapies and old therapies suggest that there is a lot of hope for our patients. And I hope that you will take uh, take a in-depth look into these slides and uh, be able to help your patients in the future. Thank you very much.